Hello, and welcome to Nurture System Podcast, part of the Vivifier podcast series. My name is Korar. I am part of Nurture System. I am the tertiary host. And if you're new here, we have DID. I am an alter. This is pretty close to my voice in Inner World. I am using Morphox. It is a technology where you can shift your voice. So that helps us as a system a lot. Especially for us guys, it helps us with dysphoria a lot. When we get to hear our own voice from inner world, hear it in the body and outer world. So welcome. If you don't know what DID is, DID is Dissociative Identity Disorder. Previously incorrectly called Multiple Personality Disorder. We are not personalities. We are individual beings in one body. So you're going to hear from multiple alters here. They're going to come out. They're going to share. We're going to share more about DID and our personal experience, including the vernacular that I just used that you may not be familiar with. So let's start there. So alter, as I shared earlier, is a term for each of us, and we exist as a system, and that's a term for all of us. That's a collective word for all of us. We are a system. An alter is what I am, what each of us are. We are individual beings. Because of prolonged, extensive torture, our brain was split. And so we are not a single existence, as those of you who don't have DID are, we are considered a plural existence. So more terminology would be a system is considered plurals because we're more than one in one body and you guys that aren't would be called a singlet. It's not a negative term. It's just a way to differentiate. It's DID terminology. It's a way for us to differentiate who's a system, and who's not. And this term is a way for us to communicate with each other and it's how we communicate as DID systems in relation to a singlet world. So if I'm curious, I'm talking to someone, we're talking to another DID system and we're talking to another DID system and we're saying, oh, we met the singlet who's really open to hearing about DID, which was so refreshing, then we can, you know, we can use that, those terms to be able to understand who we're talking about. And it really is so refreshing when we get to hear about when singlets are a part of the conversation, because basically it's, again, a minority versus majority type of conversation. So those who don't know about DID and they're not educated on DID, can cause harm by following the status quo. And the status quo is ignorant on DID. So another term I used was inner world. Inner world is also called headspace. There's also other terms for it. Different systems have different words that they use for it. And not every system has access to headspace or inner world. So inner world is where we exist in the brain. Um, and that's why it's often called headspace. Uh, we also use the term, we personally use the term inner world. So inner world is a vast existence. And we'll talk more about that. Um, but that's basically where we live when we're not here in outer world. So outer world is a term for where you all that are singlets live every day. That's the only place you live is outer world um as far as we as far as we know yeah so it's very elaborate we are what's called a polyfragmented did system um just basic overview polyfrag did systems tend to have over 100 alters have very lucid in a world uh which we do and there's many other things that um go into that as well, but I'm just going just a basic overview of what polyfrag is. We also tend to split pretty 
quickly. But yeah, we'll share more on that. So Outer World is the norm for you guys, but it's just another world to us. It's not the only world. And for a lot of parts, it was actually pretty startling to understand that your world exists. It's kind of like an alien world to a lot of parts. But yeah, so it can be pretty intense and startling for an altar to become aware and to be in the body and recognize this world. So that's just a, a little bit about it. Again, we'll talk more in detail, but this is just kind of introduction. So a main reason we're here is to break the stigma surrounding DID. There's so much stigma, it creates a lot of fear about DID systems, that we are dangerous, and so many other ignorant misinformation, mainly because of Hollywood. Uh, thanks to Hollywood, you're, in the eyes of Hollywood, if you have DID, you're a serial killer. I mean, that's the way DID is represented in Hollywood. And that's super harmful for DID systems. And this ignorance makes our lives, our lives as systems, very dangerous. It's a very dangerous prejudice as prejudice goes. That's how it goes. So we want to address things and we really welcome people to come here and ask questions. And we want to formally welcome all people because we are so glad if you found our podcast that you have come here and we hope that it makes a difference for you and your system. And we would also love to learn from you and your system for the plurals that are here because we don't have this ego that we think we know everything about DID because each system has their own experience and their own wisdom. I don't think it's possible for any one person or any one system to know everything about DID. So we're always open hearing to hearing how you and your system process things, how you support each other. And we would love to hear this because we get to grow and learn in relation and communication with other systems. And we really appreciate it. It's, it's a gift. And those of you who are singlets, you're welcome here as well. We do ask that you respect the space because in this space, systems are the focus. So if you want to learn more, please, please ask questions. We cannot stress that enough. Hi, my name is Amber, and I want to welcome you all too. So we really care about this conversation being heard by as many people as possible across the spectrum. Singlets, systems, all are very welcome. And exactly like Korara said, we really want people to ask questions. It's very important because we can't possibly know what each individual singlet is going through in regards to being educated, becoming educated about DID. We don't know, but we do ask that you don't put anything like, I'm scared in the comments because that's really the issue. A lot of people stay uninformed because of fear and when it comes to learning something new, it's really not our, how do I put this? It's really not up to us to handle your fear because we're handling our own fear of our very existence. So that's not for us to take care of you while we're trying to manage our day-to-day -day life. That's something for you to process. You can take it to a therapist and you can work on that with them. That's really not our job to handle your fear because of social ignorance on DID. It's exhausting and I don't think people understand that that's a majority entitlement to put the onus on us rather than do the self-work. Ask questions like Cora were saying. We cannot stress that enough. It could be very destabilizing to write here in the comments, I'm scared, 
in regards to DID, especially for brand new systems and for any system. I mean, I don't know, some systems might be totally fine with it, but there are other systems that that could be destabilizing for, and you just really don't know. But especially for newer systems, that is the whole issue, is a society who's afraid of us, which is based on massive ignorance. So again, it's not for the ID systems to handle your fear based on ignorance. Think of that in regards to other prejudice. The basis of prejudice is fear. It is not up to the person that you have a prejudice against for them to manage your fear, which is the very root of your prejudice. So your prejudice is for you to manage. And the symptoms of that are for you to manage with mental health support, not for us, the ones who are being acted upon with that very prejudice. I hope that's clear. And I'm not saying that you can't be scared. I'm not trying to create some kind of stigma around fear. There's nothing wrong with being afraid as long as you use it as a tool. It's okay to be scared. People are going to be scared about what they don't know. But again, as I said, that's not for us to manage. Um, and also, use it. Use your fear to become educated, to grow. If you stay in your fear, yes, you will start to harbor prejudice. That's how, that's one of the ways fears can manifest in your life. So I'm not saying it's not okay to be scared. And quite frankly, our host, when she first heard about DID, she was very scared. Now that fear actually ended up being switching. So it's a little bit different, but still, what she did with it was become educated. She asked her therapist at the time, who was actually very awful, um, who had a very ignorant reply after he educated her on DID. And she asked, do you think I have it? And he said, no, you're paranoid. And that's not a diagnosis either. Yeah, we haven't had the best experiences with therapists until lately. We have an incredible therapist that, yeah, we're, we're really lucky. We know that's not, <laughs> we know a lot of systems are not so lucky, but we've been able to work with, we have two therapists, um, that we have been able to work with that have been really awesome. So again, nothing wrong with being scared. It's, I think, very healthy to acknowledge that, that you are scared because you're being honest with yourself. But you do have to be responsible with that and not bring it to us in the sense that you expect us to fix that fear for you. We're out here having this conversation, so hopefully we can help you with that. Um, but it's not something to bring to a system especially a brand new system. Now, again, I can't speak for all systems. There may be some systems that do feel comfortable with that, but because we are very much about making this a system safe space, our focus is to make sure that you understand why we're saying to not bring it to the space. And really it's not a default to bring to systems. And it can be very destabilizing and exhausting and draining for a system to have to manage your fear. It's not a safe space for systems to be able to talk to you if your focal point is on your personal fear. Now, we are speakers. We have been human rights activists and advocates for decades. Uh, so we're very public and we've been very public and so we're able to have these conversations and there may be other systems who you can have these conversations with publicly but again it's what we're trying to educate people on is this is not the foundation to create safety or safe conversation for DID systems 
if you understood, we're hoping that if you understand how intense the day-to-day -day life of the DID system is, you will start to understand why it's really not our job to handle your fear or to take care of your fear or to give space for it. It's a lot. It's intense. We've happened to be able to do a lot of work and it's still intense for us. It's exhausting. It gets exhausting. And by that, I don't mean the time frame that it takes people to understand DID because we do have friends that sometimes it's taken them a bit longer and we're, we have the space for that. We're not here to be like, you have to understand all of us immediately. Now for other people, it's been a bit faster and other people, it's taken a little bit more time. We're not here to judge that. We appreciate people in our life who are taking the time to learn whatever that looks like for them. So we're not here trying to impose a certain time frame, a certain parameters of what it looks like for you to learn about DID. It might take time, but the fact that you're putting the effort in and that you really care, that means the world to a system. It means the world to us. I'll tell you that because even the people in our life that we still see struggling with it at times, they're doing the work. They're not giving up. They're not like, this is so beyond my spectrum of knowledge. I'm just going to stop. They are still working on it and they're, they're trying. So really for us as a system, I can say that try means everything because they're creating space in their life to try and understand. And for some people that might be harder. So again, we're not saying that it can't be hard for some people. We're just saying taking the time to do the self work to excavate and to understand a reality that society has not taught you because society has not been listening to DID systems. And we have experienced, we have experienced, and not just people that we've worked with personally, but therapists that we've come across that have this really intense arrogance um, that their degree means that they know more about us than DID. No, you know more about the science of DID. Absolutely. And that's very helpful. And we're grateful about that. But you don't know if you are a singlet, because there are some therapists who are not singlets, they're plurals, they have DID. And that's that I would think they would be highly helpful, but also depends on what they're using and what their mindset is, of course, just like anybody else. But if you are a therapist, and you have a degree, it does not mean that you know what DID is. If you're a singlet, you can't. You need to listen to DID systems. You need to listen to us because, and by us, I mean collectively DID systems, because you're not going to know how to support us. And you need to listen to a wide range of DID systems. So we're so grateful you're here, but we also very much encourage you to seek out other DID systems on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, pay attention to the different systems. You might, well, you're definitely going to learn more about DID and you might find out things that you, you could have never imagined. You cannot know how to support us if you don't listen to us. Okay. The books are not going to teach you what DID life is. We are. So our host struggling with the process of becoming an aware system, we believe is even more intense in a big part because we don't have this understanding in our society about DID. Because our society is so ignorant about DID, we believe this is what makes systems becoming aware even more traumatic. Systems becoming aware should not have to be this brutal and as isolating as it is. And of course, ultimately, we hope that one day DID systems will no longer be created. 
That's a focal point. We want to educate people on the reality that every DID system was created by prolonged torture in childhood. So we really want to support people being educated on what DID is. And in this, we hope it makes it safer and a more gentler process for systems who are becoming aware. So we hope you feel welcome here. We hope you feel safe here to ask questions because we would love to answer them. That's why we're here. We really want to support education to, to create more gentle relationships between the singlet community and the plural communities. This is Devlin. So the people to be feared are not DID systems, but those who created us. And we want to emphasize that the reason we were created, how we were created, was because abusers tortured children for prolonged periods of time. And we have become desensitized to the reality of torture. If you follow and listen to our other podcasts, The Vivifier, the original podcast, we build a conversations of Free From BDSM, which is an anti-BDSM conversation. And you'll learn more on how we were groomed as a society to be desensitized to torture and the reality of what that is. So yes, torture is the accurate term, and we're going to use that because the amount of prolonged harm that it takes to create a DID system that is absolutely torture, regardless of what the harm is. And we will not continue to be a part of a language that minimizes what was done to us. This is Fuego. Part of this conversation is to amplify the reality that you need to listen to children. We are a Ramcoa created system. The forms of torture that were used on us and that were done to us were done on such a level as to not be believed. We want to focus highly on educating everyone, the general populace as well as mental health professionals. If a child says something that sounds outrageous to you, you need to listen. Investigate it because these abusers that target children, they know what they're doing and they know how to make it seem that the kid is lying, especially with how outrageous the torture is. One of the big parts of this conversation that we want to focus on as well is belief children and that we have a long way to go in regards to the human rights of children and the humanization of children. So we're out here so we can give voice to those who do not have a voice and those who didn't make it. We were lucky to have survived what we did. And that's really important to all of us in the system that the voices who can't be out here talking the way we do are the ones who have been shut down, called conspiracy theorists, when actually the reality is those who are anti-Ramcoa are massive conspiracy theorists. We're here. We exist. We have to live with the memory daily to function. We have to process all sorts of things that you can't even imagine to function. So we exist, we're real. And if you have to go through so many mental loops and so many ridiculous, I mean, it really is. They call survivors conspiracy theorists. We are, we are proof that this happened. We're not the only ones that exist that they, that have experienced this. And Ramco survivors, when we get together and we talk about experiences, it's very similar. So the fact that you can still pretend and create an entire conspiracy theory that we were drugged or we were persuaded by our therapist to have Ramcoa, that's not how a DID system is created. But we can't be hypnotized into DID. So it's pretty outrageous and outlandish with these people. Um, the, the mental contortionism 
of these anti-Ramcoa people, but I'm just like, why would you put so much effort into silencing victims? It's really gross. It's really gross, and it's also massive apologia. And um, I, we've we um, just got out of a Reddit <laughs> that that is all about saying that people who have Ramcoa are fake and not DID systems. Hey man, don't you think we wish it was fucking fake? You think we're out here fighting for this shit to be fucking real for the sake of for fun? For just for shits and giggles? I would rather be fucking eating ice cream and being a fucking singlet than out here explaining to you fucking numbskulls that what I fucking lived is real. Like, what a fucking privilege you have to get to pretend that what I lived, what created me, isn't real. I mean, go hug your fucking blankie if that's what helps you sleep at night, man. Whatever. You know, just because you can't process something doesn't mean it's not fucking real. Just say, this is too horrific for my mind to even fathom. I can't fathom this. Have some fucking self-responsibility. Instead of creating this, these reddits and these little communities where you can pat each other in the back, because guess what? Guess who you're supporting? You're supporting fucking pedophiles. You're supporting the ones who did this to us. You're supporting our abusers. You're supporting the abusers and creators of DID system. Not every DID system was created by Ramcoa, but I'm specifically talking about Ramcoa created systems in this context right in this second. So, must be nice that you can just tippy tap on your keyboard and erase or attempt to erase because you really can't. It doesn't matter what you say, what I lived happened, and I'm a fucking altar because of it. So, that's cute. Have fun burning your head in the sand. I mean, whatever keeps you cozy. But the reality is, while you're staying cozy, there are children being tortured right now. Potentially, even in your own community. But guess what? You're supporting their voice being shut down. You're supporting them not being heard. You're supporting pedophiles. What's that like? Is that the price you're willing to pay for your comfort? That's disgusting and pathetic. So we're not going to allow that either. You come to the comment section. I personally will delete and block if you pull any anti-Ramcoa shit. Really, we're not, we're not playing with that. This is Sabrina. Yeah, it's pretty mind-blowing, um, the massive ignorance that is out there. There are also people out there that are the same group of people who are anti-Ramcoa are also saying there's no such thing as polyfrag systems. So it's, yeah, it definitely is a massive weird conspiracy. Um, people who think they can, they are the gods of DID or something. It's like, my opinions on the internet change the reality of your existence. They don't. You just look dumb. So like my system buddy said, you really, y'all need to listen to kids, for real. Um, and you need to be afraid of the ones who made us, not DID systems, any more than you would another human being. Obviously, you take people as they are, as they show up with you. I'm not saying have this Pollyanna view that every DID system is safe because they aren't, right? But that's just like as normal as any other human being. When you think that we are more unsafe or more dangerous than a singlet, that's problematic. But just as you would take a singlet as how they operate and who they are and learn about how they choose to be, the same thing goes for DID systems. We're just trying to get through our day-to-day -day life and dealing with the violent ignorance on DID. 
puts us at danger and at risk. And because people are so afraid of DID systems, they make our lives more difficult. There's a lot of DID systems that are in hiding, and rightfully so, because of their safety and because of social ignorance. But we're hoping that the more communication that is out there, that one day it's safer for DID systems to just casually unmask. And of course, no one has to tell anyone they have DID. That's your privacy. And it's just, that's up to you. You don't have to share with anyone. Um, but we want to create, we'd like to be a part of, because we're not the first ones out here. We have been listening to and watching other DID systems that helped us feel more comfortable to come out and talk about this, um, that we want to be a part of conversation as well of making it safer for systems to be able to walk around in the data life. And if they want to, if they feel like sharing that they're a system, that that be safe for them. But like my system buddy said too, we're not here trying to tell systems to come out and tell everything. We've been activists for de decades, so we're out and we're ready to be out. We're done hiding because it's just we've gotten to the point where this is now just another part of our communication and part of our human rights communication. So it's just who we are already as far as being public, but we're not telling other systems that you have to do the same or this is the way it has to look. It's different for everybody. And again, this is just an extension of who we already are. So it's just what's natural for us to come next. So it's very important to stay safe. Only you know what that looks like. You have a right to your privacy. This world, this country, it's, and also globally, because systems exist globally. The world is still pretty supremely ignorant when it comes to DID. So please trust yourself and keep yourself safe. We're also having these conversations for people who can't be out, and we understand why. We are professional speakers, and we already were. And we are now three years aware. Hi, this is Ezra. So we're going to be talking more about all of our roles as well. So I am a caretaker, and... We're also going to share about our inner world experience and existence as well. So as a caretaker, what I do is I take care of littles, but I have also other jobs. But we're going to be sharing a little bit here and then, of course, more with the approval <laughs> of our gatekeeper. But just to give you guys um, an idea, so right now what you're experiencing, this is called switching. So when one altar comes in and another altar is no longer speaking, those other altars are still here. So the ones you heard speaking, many of them are still what's called co-con, co-consciousness. So the one who's speaking right now, which right now is me, Ezra, that means I'm fronting. So I'm the one who's in the body and I'm the one who's speaking. And co-con is short for co-consciousness. That's where others are right now. So they're right around me in inner world um, or next to the front. So they're co-conscious. Another term is co-fronting, but that's much rarer for us. So that's kind of changing lately. We've <laughs> lately been having more co-fronting experiences. So it's been interesting. Um, so co-fronting is when there's two people in the front. Sometimes it's more than two people. The most we've experienced so far is two people co-fronting. So that means they are as front in the body as I am now, but they're not speaking. Sometimes the co-fronter and the fronter will go back and forth between speaking, but mostly for us, we haven't experienced that yet. Our co-fronts are usually silent unless they unless it turns more into a fronting experience anyway that might sound very confusing for a lot of you who are new to DID 
and um, feel free to ask questions and we will clarify more as the podcasts continue. So for us, when it feels like multiple people are trying to talk at once or they're just popping in and out of inner world and outer world, we call that switchy. Um, so for, we could be like, hey, we're feeling pretty switchy today. <laughs> that just means like a lot of people are trying to talk and come out to the front. So not all of us will be coming to the front and talk right now. Plus, um, we've gotten a bit stronger in the switching, but it's still, it's exhausting. But we do have a lot of people who want to talk and who will be talking over the series of the podcast. So you're going to meet a lot more alters. So we look forward to sharing more with you all. And uh, we're really excited that you're all here. Hey, this is Adora. So, yeah, we're really grateful you're all here. And this is for any trolls that find themselves under our bridge. I just want to make it very clear. This is a safe space for systems. So y'all fuck around and find out. Um, quickly, your existence in the comment section will disappear and you'll be deleted. It's really that simple. So just popping in to share that. Also share lots of love to all y'all systems and our system buddies showing up on here. And we're really excited that y'all are here. And we hope that this space is comfortable for y'all to share. And we hope that it helps you, especially newer systems, get through some hard times that we didn't have the support for. So yeah, just here reinforcing that very clear boundary that we're here as a safe space for systems. Everybody's welcome but you're going to come here correctly and with respect because we ain't playing that. So just a little pop in, then y'all know. Okay, bye. Okay, so that was very adore. Um, so yeah, this is Crystal. I'm the host. Fuego is the co-host and Cora is the tertiary host. And we operate as a team here. So we have, we have like three hosts, but while I'm the main host, we still operate as three hosts really so we kind of balance um and we balance each other very nicely Korar is very <laughs> it's very he's the very middle ground like support um but yeah even as hosts we still operate as a system as a team so we all work together so there's no dictatorship here um and even though as the hosts were out here uh, supporting the system it doesn't mean we're the only alters that are out here um many parts come in and out i mean they live the day-to-day -day, many of them as well so we're very lucky to have an amazing partner system we did not expect that it's like just been the most beautiful thing that's happened in our life since our child really um and it's been incredible so there's multiple beautiful relationships culminating across systems and it's been really beautiful it's just been ugh, just so refreshing and beautiful and healthy and healing and we're getting to know what love actually is this is the first time we're having a loving relationship and we're realizing that our other relationships were trauma bonding so this has been incredible um but yeah so we're very fluid as a system we're definitely system fluid um as who's coming in and out and like like you said we operate as a team and we're not interested in like the final fusion type of thing which really sounds like a video game level <laughs> i like video games okay just just bear with me um it would never be a singlet that's already taken from us and so we don't want to be a singlet we exist as a team and we enjoy being a team so we'll from the perspectives here that's what we're going to be talking from will there be healing fusions that just come naturally sure and i know that in some of the terminology has changed too. Like there's, um, we're not up to date with all of the terminology as far as like the fusions changing. Um, some people are using different terms for that fusion where like alters organically come together. Um, so, but we're all here for those that organically happen. Um, but not alters, not all alters are interested in that. Um, so, we coexist and we coexist wonderfully and we enjoy each other and we work as a team and like any team sometimes there are issues but we work through them 
So um, we're not judging any system that that's what they want and that feels really good for them um, because we would never want to do that. Like whatever is unique and like whatever is true for you, that's true and that's real. Um, for us personally, we feel like it's an expectation to shut off altars and pretend to be a singlet um, in a the majority of a therapeutic, quote unquote therapeutic view when it comes to DID, but we don't support that. Um, and oftentimes that's pushed and oftentimes that's the conversation or the communication. Um, so, but like I said, for any system who's done that and that's been helpful and that's true for you, we completely and fully support you. We're not here to polarize that. Um, but we're here to support conversations for the systems who want to exist as a team, who want to cohesively exist and not push, you know, and sometimes what happens is altars are pushed dormant. Um, so like we said, fusions that happen organically, that's totally fine. Um, we welcome that. Um, but the main parts that are out, we don't want that. Um, we just want to enjoy existence as a team. So many words to say, uh, we will not be here in the conversation of some final fusion um, and our therapist, a conversation that's, you know, she's aware that's not what we want. She's very supportive of supporting us working as a team. And there's actually more therapists coming forward who are supporting that and who are also standing for systems who are like, that's not what we want. And um, seeing this final fusion, quote unquote, um, as the ideal really is in our personal perspective as an ableist um, conversation in regards to DID because it creates this you're not healed unless you're a singlet listen we didn't ask to be a system here we are but we're going to enjoy our lives to the best of our ability um, and we love each other we we are we've grown as a very strong team and we enjoy each other's existence so please no final fusion pushers in the comments um, as if there's, we're only, there's only healing happening if only one of us is here because that's just not the case. Um, so just please be respectful of that, uh, because we exist as a team and that's how we will continue to. And I mean, really just we're setting the boundaries of the space that we're creating here and the communication and conversations that we're about to bring forward. So, um, yeah, but we're really grateful that everybody's here. All of you who've come here. Yay. Hi. Um, if you want to support us, do subscribe, like, comment, share. It's a free way to support us. You can also support us in other ways. We will have links below. Um, we have business that we're rebuilding and so yeah, feel free to check that out. We also have, um, a poetry ebook that we created before we knew we are a DID system. So that's available um, on our website. A free way to support us, as always, is to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And please also support other DID systems as well. It's really important that you get different conversations of different DID systems because everyone's existence is different. And no one system knows everything about DID. It's really important to explore other DID channels and TikToks, Instagram, and stuff like that. I know other parts have said that, but I really want to lean on that. Um, and you really get to learn more and how to support other systems. And we are a Ramcoa created polyfrag DID system. And so that's the perspective we're going to be coming from, but we're also going to be, um, you know, not every system is Ramcoa or polyfrag. So you're going to want to learn more. Um, but we are going to be talking a lot of the stuff that we experience as a Ramcoa created DID system is, you know, there are day-to-day -day things that we experience that are, that are similar or the same as um, other DID systems. So, so we have a very lucid inner world, which we'll share about. Um, we have planets, we have currency, we have oceans, castles, mansions, huts. Like we just, it's very intricate. We have cities. There are so many, there are couples in here. There are full on families in here. We have generations in our system. 
And we'll share more on that in, like Ezra said, in accordance with our gatekeeper's protocols, of course. Our gatekeeper is Farah. So there are many more of us that are going to be sharing. I know Shim and Animus want to add some stuff, but we're going to be working on that in the next podcast. So they're probably going to be, they're going to be the ones that lead the next podcast or start the next podcast off. So yeah, thank you for being here. This is Farah. I am the gatekeeper of Nurture System. As stated, there are safety parameters. Anyone who does not comply to the consequence will be delete and block with no further communication. This must be respected. If you do not respect the conversation of DID, then you do not belong here and will not continue here. You must also check in with your system and see if they feel safe in this conversation. Hearing different alters, us speaking here using Morphox might be too much for certain people, singlets, or certain systems. You must check in with your own safety parameters and behave accordingly. The mind of each being has its capacity, and not everybody can, nor is everybody ready to hear from a DID system in this capacity, in this specific way, with the voices as we are sharing here, with this modification technology that expresses our inner world voice. So do take care of yourselves. It's Korar, again. So thank you for being here, guys. We've all said that, but we all kind of have our own ways of ending things and saying goodbye. So we look forward to having you here on the next podcast of Nurture System. We rise, we rise together.